we continue to uh, scratch our heads um, at this push that really comes down to zero tailpipe emissions. And that's been the focus. Hi, everybody. I'm Jack Roberts. I'm executive editor with Heavy Duty Trucking Magazine. My guest today is Chad Lindholm. He's director of sales, vice president of sales for clean energy out of the evil carb state of California. So thanks for joining us today, Chad. My pleasure. Great to be here, Jack. So we're going to talk about renewable natural gas. And I want to set the stage a little bit by saying uh, the trucking industry has a problem coming at it. We've got some pretty steep environmental regulations that are going to come our way beginning in 2027. The industry has responded in a commendable fashion with uh, new technology in the form of electric trucks and the form of hydrogen fuel cell. And it looks like those solutions are going to work really well in urban haul applications, delivery, some regional haul. Long haul is a bit of a problem. And I am I correct in saying that? Certainly agree with you, Jack. We we at Clean Energy and really the RNG industry look at, uh, gosh, the, the array of different regulations, policies that have come out over the last several years. It um, It's mind-numbing. And to be a, a truck fleet um, trying to carry goods day in and day out and to balance all these different regulations is um, nothing short of a significant challenge. We're excited that I think there's hopefully going to be some clarity as we go into next calendar year. Um, some of the dust is going to settle. Uh, various solutions to, uh, at the end of the day, reduce emissions profile, uh, both from a carbon standpoint as well as criteria pollutant. I think they're all going to play a viable role. And the fleets we talk to want to participate uh, in achieving these emission reductions, but do it in a pragmatic way that makes sense for them and their customers. So let's take a step back. It's easy for a fleet owner in, let's say, Greenwood, Mississippi to go, that's West Coast stuff. This isn't something that's going to affect me. That is uh, an erroneous uh, conclusion to draw, isn't it? Sooner or later, these regulations are going to affect the entire country. We certainly believe so. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that happens in, in this state of California where I'm based. Um, don't necessarily agree with most that comes out of CARB, but CARB carries a, a big stick. Um, generally, several other states start to follow in somewhat of a similar fashion. Our goal uh, continues to be working with CARB, working with the regulators, hearing the voice of, of the trucking industry to to deliver a consistent message that says um, all advancing fuels, all advancing biofuels, all emission reduction technologies do play a role and should be at the table. But uh, it should not be a position where we pick one winner, we look away from all these other solutions that make great sense and are here and available today. So you mentioned CARB's big stick, which is a really good segue to what the meat of what we're going to talk about today, which is renewable natural gas. Um, CARB has a big stick. They could put renewable natural gas on the front burner if they chose to, and yet they don't. And I have talked to some mystified and frustrated engine manufacturers who shall remain nameless in the course of this interview, um, who feel that there might be some combustion bias there. Um What's going on? What's the problem with renewable natural gas? And why does CARB seem to be hesitant to uh, push it as a viable option for diesel fuel and long haul applications? It's a great question, Jack. We continue to uh, scratch our heads um, at this push that really comes down to zero tailpipe emissions. And that's been the focus, i.e. an electric or nothing solution um, that we all know uh, Make, can make a lot of sense and is part of uh, the pie to get us to where we want to be, but um, has limited applications amongst other challenges that exist, like they do with all technologies and all fuels. Where we're at is saying, hey, internal combustion engines, i.e. a diesel engine that can run on renewable diesels, a great application. Natural gas that can run on renewable natural gas, is a great application. We have a 90% reduction in criteria pollutants by doing so. 
And if you take a wells to wheels comparison of all technologies in all fuels, and that means from source and pulling the energy out to ultimately getting to the vehicle, uh, natural gas in its RNG form actually comes out on top. If we're looking at carbon intensity uh, as a viable indicator, that product today, we have many projects across the country that can deliver a carbon reduction on average at as much as negative 300%. There's no other technology or fuel available today or in the foreseeable future that can get even close to that. So let's take a step, another step back. I keep taking steps back in this interview, um, but I'm a newbie. I'm not uh, Jay Leno or uh, Jimmy Kimmel, but um, let's tell people what renewable natural gas is and how it's different from the natural gas that everyone seems to think of coming out of the byproduct of the drilling process and, and uh, in the oil fields today. Sure. Yeah. It's an absolute game changer in our, in our industry. And what you're ultimately doing is, taking a decomposing organic compound that comes um, primarily out of landfills and dairy farms, and that's methane, okay? Methane is naturally occurring. And instead of it releasing up into the atmosphere, okay, that's certainly not a good thing. The RNG industry has advanced to such a point where either at landfills or dairy farms, we're able to capture that methane we're able to clean it and inject it right back into the same pipeline infrastructure that exists and is covering millions of miles across the United States. So that RNG now goes into the same pipeline infrastructure and can be nominated to fueling facilities that ultimately dispense that product right into a vehicle. And that vehicle, being a Class A truck, today can run on a Cummins 15 liter engine that's an OEM product coming right off the assembly line here in the United States. It's a pretty powerful product. You bring up an important point, the performance. Now there were some early natural gas engines that were underpowered. I, I drove one back in the day up in Vancouver and I, I still say it was the worst day behind the wheel I've ever had in 30 <laughs> years of trucking journalist, but I was pulling a B train. Um, the the software in the engines today, the uh, the calibrations that are possible to do with automated manual transmissions, I, th I don't think a lot of people realize we're really talking about almost apples to apples performance in terms of diesel engines, correct? In terms of range, torque, everything, right? No question. Uh, and, it, and it's funny you mentioned the, the old days. There's no question that the uh, industry itself we've licked our wounds, right? We, we had an underpowered engine, uh, an engine that didn't have diesel-like performance and reliability, couldn't hang on and do the loads day in and day out. That engine is a workhorse in vocational applications, refuse and ready mix today, uh, and is a workhorse in transit bus operations. So there's thousands of these engines on the road, albeit in a lower capacity. What came out roughly a year ago is now a 15 liter. It's the X15N. It's produced by Cummins. So we all know that name that does carry the horsepower and torque that drivers are familiar with, can make the grade, can get the range, can give the performance uh, that these fleets desire uh, so that they can get the job done. They can carry 80,000 pounds. They can go over grades. They can go well over a thousand miles in between filling uh, and do so in a reliable way, and also have access to a robust and proven network of dealers and maintenance facilities that already blanket the U.S. that are serving the diesel engines that are out there. Another point I want to bring up is when you read stories about fleets trying to switch over to all electric or uh, hydrogen fuel cell, um, they are gobsmacked at the amount of money they have to spend, the bureaucracies in some states uh, getting permitted. Um, a diesel fleet could switch over to RNG um, relatively easy compared to all the investments that would have to be made to switch to an all new propulsion system, correct? Yes, and they can do so today. You can place an order for an X15N RNG powered Class A truck, it's delivered in the same time frame as a diesel truck. 
it comes from the same dealership network that they're familiar with, they can do so at a nominal incremental price to diesel while saving in excess of $2 a gallon on RNG fuel. And what they do with the modeling on that is simply with us and others look at well, what's my total cost of ownership that gets into the upfront investment costs I'm going to make, the fuel savings I'm going to receive. And at some point I'm meeting a crossroads. And that ultimately means that if I were to buy a diesel engine or a natural gas engine, what makes sense over the life of this truck? And we believe very strongly as an industry today that there's a strong business case with a total cost of ownership savings over the life of that RNG powered truck that allows fleets to make a business decision that complements their annual procurement cycle. Are we asking that they flip over 100% overnight? Absolutely not. We look at this as a viable complementary solution to what fleets are already accustomed to and are already doing it in their annual procurement cycles. So you're encouraging fleets to start experimenting now. No question. Learn about it. So the clock is ticking. And, you know, I've often said in, in some of the columns that I write that, you know, one of the problems with this whole transition is we literally have our economy riding on getting it right. Um, we're expecting the trucking industry to all by itself pull off a project on the magnitude of the moon landings or the Manhattan project. And, you know, the clock is ticking. So what can the industry do? What can clean energy do? What can a, a humble scribe like myself do to kind of get the ball rolling? It seems like there's been some news out of California in the past couple of weeks that maybe they're reconsidering their stance on RNG. Kind of where do we stand right now and what, in your opinion, needs to happen to move RNG forward as a, as a long-haul trucking fuel? I think the simple answer uh, is fleets need to make orders. And what I mean by that, our, our challenge as an industry was to deliver a product that made economic sense. The environmental sustainability story is there. It's strong. It's proven. We have an economic story that now has arrived and matched that. And that's a game changer. Fleets need to make orders. And in making orders, we believe that that will send a message to D.C., to Sacramento that says, Fleets are embracing this technology. They're behind this technology. They don't want to be forced to move into technologies that, frankly, aren't prime time, aren't ready, do not make business sense, rely heavily on government subsidies and tax credits. And in coming back and saying, yes, I'm in favor of RNG, that will start to capture the attention more so of the media and the policymakers so that they stay, take a step back and say, hold on a minute. We have another solution that makes sense. Let's stop picking winners and let's look at all options that are on the table to get us to our ultimate goal. And that is emission reductions and carbon reductions. You know, we'd be remiss not to point out that the uh, refuse industry has been burning natural gas as a fuel for, gosh, what, 30 years, maybe longer Decades. than that. I mean, they are very mature and very bullish on this on this fuel, correct? They are. Uh, natural gas in the refuse space is not an alternative fuel. In fact, it's the primary fuel. More than 60% of purchases on an annual basis in that industry are RNG powered trucks today. Fleets, you know, the biggest ones in the country, waste management, has over 12,000 refuse trucks on the road today all on natural gas, Republic Services, thousands of trucks, Waste Connections, Green for Life. We can go on. This is the prominent technology and fuel of choice in the refuse industry. It's been proven out as a durable engine, and there's no reason why in the Class 8 space we can't do the same. And, you know, I guess the other thing, you mentioned infrastructure, but I know from, uh, I interviewed you for my uh, two-part series on RNG that's up on the uh, Trucking Info the HCT website right now, RNG is growing at a spectacular rate right now, isn't it? It really seems like there is a lot of opportunity in this space for everyone from dairy farms to fleets to you name it, correct? There are. We as an industry this year will uh, deliver just under about a billion gallons, one billion gallons of RNG fuel from a combination of landfills, and dairy farms that continues to grow. And that's moving across an existing network of 
fueling facilities. There's over a thousand stations today that are available uh, for fleets to access this fuel, most of which trucking fleets can get in with a tractor and a 53 foot trailer. So uh, do we have a station on every corner? Are we at every exit off the highway? No, but there's a robust network in place today. And we as an industry will continue to expand that network and respond to the fleets uh, with fueling points as trucks hit the road. So let's circle back. I know you touched on it, but um, you look at all the money you're going to have to shell out if you want to switch over to electric trucks or hydrogen fuel cell. Um, there is a really solid business case, even for a small fleet owner in Omaha, Nebraska, Minot, North Dakota, um, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Um, this is not some tree hugger West Coast you know, pie in the sky stuff. This is a viable solution for pretty much any fleet uh, in the nation with a really solid business case behind it. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And, and the reality, because of the various regulations and challenges happening in California, we're seeing a lot more movement, interest, and fleet deployments happening across the Midwest, across the Southeast with small and mid-sized carriers that are saying, hey, I have an economic solution here that can get me a two to three year payback on an asset. Then I'm in the black and I'm collecting money because of the fuel savings. I can deploy these trucks to readily available stations. I can meet the needs of my clients who are asking me to participate in their various sustainability initiatives. And I have a product that I don't have to worry uh, whether it can do the job day in and day out so that I can get the freight from point A to point B. Makes a lot of sense. So final question. We're at the end of 2024 where I think, uh, I think things are going to get pretty interesting the next year or two. What do you hope to see happen as we move closer to 27? I know you'd like to see fleets tick up by uh, sort of make the case for scale, make the case in Washington that this is a viable fuel. Just kind of generally, what are you looking for over the next year or so in, in the RNG world? We're excited to see these truck orders come to fruition. And we believe very strongly uh, as an industry and with our various channel partners um, in the supply chain, whether it be Cummins, the OEMs, the dealer principals, and folks like us that are building infrastructure and selling fuel, that uh, there's no question uh, that we can, on the road next year, deliver in excess of 3,000 new X-15N trucks. We believe we have a pathway to double that the following year and ultimately get to a point over the next several years where on an annual basis, we're seeing eight to 10 percent penetration annually on Class A orders with RNG. So on the way out the door, let's assume there's a guy in, oh, I don't know, I'm picking cities at random. Why don't we say uh, Syracuse, New York, who watches this video and he goes, OK, I'm interested. I, I want answers. How can he get answers? Can he reach out to clean energy? Can he reach out to you? How does he begin the process of educating himself so that he can begin to make some informed decisions about using this fuel? I think a great place to start is to reach out to our industry association group. That is the transport project. Uh, that is a great resource to have all your FAQs answered, um, to get in touch with the appropriate folks, again, on the truck technology side of the house, the dealer side of the house, the fueling side of the house, they can certainly come right to us. But the transport project's a great place to go. Uh, and beyond that, certainly cleanenergyfuels.com uh, and reaching out to me directly would be our pleasure to steer them in the right direction as they start to explore this as a viable option. Chad, we want to thank you for your time today. You sort of put this together uh, real quick ahead of the holidays. Um, fascinating subject. Um, we appreciate your, your expertise and um, hope you have a happy holidays and uh, looking forward to seeing what's coming uh, in 2025. Thanks, Jack. It's been my pleasure.